What is up everybody and welcome to this note um, video, note video. Uh, basically it's a summary of a interview that Smart Drug Smarts had with Dr. Steven Zeisel and it was all about choline. Now choline is one of my favorite nootropics um, and it's basically a B vitamin that you get by either taking alpha GPC or city choline. And in this interview, um, this interview kind of like blew my mind because Dr. Steven Zeisel, um, we've read so many of his papers, right, all covering like, you know, the uh, cognitive enhancing effects of the choline B vitamin. So hearing him talk about all of the benefits and all of the studies um, on the interview was like pretty amazing. So anyway, let's dive right into it. So choline does basically two things. It, number one, it builds neurons, and number two, it creates the acetylcholine uh, neurotransmitter. And the result of those two things are basically enhanced memory and enhanced overall cognition. Now, the emergency is that, according to most estimates, about 80%, that's 80% of people are choline deficient. And Dr. Stephen Zeisel in the interview actually uh, predicted more people than that were actually choline deficient and therefore have suboptimal memory and suboptimal cognition. So anyway, uh, let's talk about what he said in the interview and kind of explain it. So number one, it builds neurons. Now, believe it or not, I have another whiteboard. <laughs> I, I don't know why I bought so many, but anyway, here's my cool metal whiteboard and I'm gonna explain very quickly how neurons work. So basically the brain is made up of brain cells, also known as neurons, and whenever you have a thought or information in your mind, it has to travel from one neuron to the next neuron, to the next neuron, to the next neuron, next neuron, next neuron, to wherever it needs to go. Now, each of your neurons, right, has to be actually repaired and made. And that's where choline comes in. Because choline uh, creates the outer wrapper of the neuron called the cell membrane. So if you think of a neuron as a giant circle, a very poorly drawn circle, um, so you've got the neuron, well, like the cell body, right, which is on the inside, and this is where everything is. But on the outside, this kind of outer layer here, so this area, that's the neuron cell membrane, right? It's the protective outer wrapper that holds everything in. And obviously, if you don't have um, the outer wrapper, you don't have the neuron, and the neuron kind of disintegrates and dies. Now, basically, choline um, creates phospholipids, which is, you know, kind of like, you know, a healthy uh, fat that actually forms several layers of this neuron cell membrane. That's why choline is so important, because it literally is used to repair your brain cells. Um, and Dr. Stephen Zeisel in the interview said that this was the main role um, of choline, which is, you know, making the wrappers called the membranes. So that's benefit one of choline, which is uh, building and uh, or being used to create the wrappers of your, of your neurons. The second benefit is it creates acetylcholine. Consult whiteboard number one. <laughs> so number two here, acetylcholine. Now, acetylcholine is the main nerve messenger or uh, commonly called a neurotransmitter. And I've done another video on uh, like a basic explanation of how neurons and neurotransmitters work. But to quickly recap, basically, um, when a signal or like a thought goes from one neuron to the next neuron, right, it has to travel this way, yeah? So the electrochemical signal goes from the first neuron to the second neuron. It's being delivered. So that's your thought or your memory, any cognition, basically. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as that because it's not a wired connection. There's actually a little gap in between um, like the tentacle-like arms between your neurons. And that gap is called the synaptic cleft. And basically, like the signal has to jump across. And how does it do this? Well, it does it with these little dots I'm going to draw here. And these are called neurotransmitters. Basically, they're kind of like the postmen. So they package up the information 
and then they take it, well, they jump across the gap and take it to the next neuron. So they're basically like couriers, um, or Stevens Isol calls them chemical messengers. So it's very important to have lots of neurotransmitters because without them you can't really deliver these messages. And acetylcholine is actually the main neurotransmitter messenger in the brain. So in the interview he talked that, um, uh, let me go to my notes here. So acetylcholine is the uh, main neurotransmitter used um, to actually take memories and store it in your memory center, which is also known as your hippocampus, which is why a lot of people call acetylcholine the learning neurotransmitter, because it's so much involved in you know, uh, storing memories and learning things. As well as this, acetylcholine is uh, used to go or to take information to your frontal cortex, which is your thinking uh, center in your brain as well. And also acetylcholine is used to actually uh, take signals from your brain to your muscles. So when you want to move or um, you, when you want to contract or uh, you know, move your muscles and joints and things like that, it's the acetylcholine neurotransmitter which takes that signal from your brain to your muscles. And interestingly, he said in the interview that when people have Alzheimer's, um, the first thing to go are the acetylcholine nerves, uh, which is uh, very significant. Um, and of course, that kind of explains uh, why acetylcholine is so like you know linked to memory um, cool so yeah acetylcholine absolutely vital um, he also noted several other things about choline which you know are pretty insane so he said that well he mentioned a whole bunch of things like uh, when he started out studying choline he noticed that mice actually became ill when they were deprived of choline and that um, when he tested this on humans, because Dr. Steven Zeisel was one of the first guys who really uh, studied choline and its effect on you know, cognition. Uh, he works at the University of North Carolina, by the way. Um, but when he tested this on humans, um, the human subjects actually became very ill when they were deprived of choline. But uh, funnily enough, they actually became completely healthy again once they got the choline back. Um, as well as this, he mentioned an alarming stat, which is 93% of pregnant women um, aren't getting enough choline, which is a major issue because um, during pregnancy, uh, babies have 15 times more choline than the mother when in the womb. And there's a lot more information that he's uh, talked about um, regarding the importance of choline and uh, the development of uh, baby's um, cognition. So, for example, after birth, the milk from the mother um, also notably has a much higher concentration of choline. And as well as this, he's seen many uh, examples that the development of the brain actually depends on the availability of choline at a young age. Uh, so, for example, they, well, he saw in the mice studies that the number of nerve stem cells um, in the brain actually depended depended on the level of choline as well so the more choline available to the child or the baby mice I should say um, the more uh, nerve stem cells in the brain were formed and the less choline the less formed um, as well as this the actual development of the brain um, the memory center the hippocampus um, that correlated with the level of choline uh, that the uh, the baby got as well as the development of the frontal cortex so again, the thinking center of the brain also depended on the um, amount of choline that the baby got. As well as this, the actual layering of the frontal cortex, so it's the layers of the frontal cortex that talk to the other areas of the brain, um, that actually also did not form when choline uh, was too low. Uh, and this, again, was in animal studies. And interestingly, he also referenced in 2016 a Harvard School of Public Health human study in Boston, which found that higher choline intake during pregnancy um, correlated with cognitive performance of a child when they were later seven years old. So if the baby, oh, like uh, while the baby's in the womb during pregnancy, if it had more choline, they could actually predict uh, during the first and second trimester of pregnancy 
the actual cognitive performance of that same baby when it was seven years old. That's pretty uh, amazing as well. So what else do you say? Um, yeah, so let's... Actually, yeah, one more thing. So choline is also used to create a thing called single myelin, which um, are the wrappers around your axons. So again, um, if you look at a neuron, so here's the neuron, right? I think this pen sucks. So the neuron's there, and basically neurons are connected to lots of other neurons. So basically, uh, <laughs> so the whiteboard stopped working. But anyway, I can explain like this. So neurons, um, they're connected to lots of other neurons, right? With these kind of long tentacle-like arms. Um, and those tentacle-like arms are called axons. And when those axons are insulated, um, the signals actually travel faster to your other neurons, so your other brain cells. So obviously, if you have well-insulated axons, um, it's a better thing. And choline actually creates that insulation um, as well around these axons. So, you know, uh, fantastic for brain development there. And overall, you know, uh, the speed at which your cognition works. Cool. So um, that's basically like, you know, a whole bunch of the studies. Uh, Stephen uh, Zeisel also recommends that people basically take half a gram of choline every day in order to get the optimal uh, memory and brain development and all those uh, overall cognition benefits. So half a gram a day is about 500 milligrams of choline every day. And you can get that uh, with either, you know, through your diet. So eating lots of chicken, eggs, that kind of thing. I think he said about um, three large eggs per day. Um, but you can, of course, check this officially, which I'd, I'd recommend using an official calculator. I'll link that below on this web page um, as well. And in terms of if you want to use supplements, because in my experience, most people get about 200 milligrams of choline per day on like a normal diet. Um, so you, for men um, who need about 550 milligrams of choline per day, you're going to want an extra 350 uh, milligrams of choline every day and you can get that probably uh, the best way of doing that is using either alpha GPC which is the most concentrated form of choline supplementation or another very popular choline supplement is called city choline um, also known as CDP choline which has a lower concentration of choline but at the same time the half-life is a bit longer so it's like you know three days so in the end, like while you take like less choline every time, it does stack up on your system. Um, so after like, you know, three days, um, you should be taking roughly the same kind of dosage as you would have been taking alpha GPC anyway. Uh, so basically like they're both the same and you can check out the, you know, all that information on the web page as well. Like just look up like alpha GPC or C choline and you'll see all of that, you know, info. So yeah, that's basically the importance of choline and uh, my summary of the study with Dr. Steven Zeisel um, on uh, Smart Drug Smarts, a great radio podcast. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, I also highly recommend you uh, listen to the interview. It's about 40 minutes long, but like, it's crazy good, um, really interesting. And uh, he talks all about like, you know, the benefits of choline, which are again, building the wrappers around your neurons called membranes and also creating the acetylcholine learning neurotransmitter.